Hello everybody, today I've got a pair of Floorshine Imperials model 77127 that I purchased online recently for about 60 bucks plus shipping. Uh, these are in pretty good shape, so I'm not just going to clean them up and polish them. I'm actually going to send these things off to Patina Works Arizona, to Alberto Suastez, the Patina Master, and we're going to do a custom patina on these. Okay, so let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of My five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cordovan. Can you tell the difference? Now here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. And here they are, all finished up. Now, as far as these shoes, uh, there is surprisingly very little on the internet about the Canadian made floor shimes. And you can see the floor shime logo is in really nice shape. And then obviously you can see the Canadian maple leaf. And I actually purchased these from a gentleman in, uh, I think it's in the floor shime, uh, uh, floor shime and uh, other long lost vintage shoes Facebook group. Uh, they fit me. They are a size 11 double E. And uh, from everything I read, all the Canadian floor shimes were made by a company called John McHale. Surprisingly little inter uh, information on the internet. I really don't even see any direct articles. About all I see is comments from other people like on Styleform and things like that that all seem to say Canadian made floor shimes made by John McHale. I do see some differences, a little bit of uh, a little bit of differences from the floor shimes, such as these are my second pair of vintage floor shimes. If you remember these that I just did, I uh, released a video on either was it December of 2021, I believe, um, and I'm going to show you how these shoes have held up. Um, and these are a model 96624s that I resold myself at home. Three part video. I'll put a link here, and that's all hand stitched. If you didn't already see the video, um, I did put heel savers on them and i've worn these quite a bit uh for about 12 of the uh, 12 of the 12 days out of the first two weeks i finished them i just wore the crap out of them because i loved them so much and i put new leather heels on new midsole new outsole uh, forgive me guys i did put a rubber half sole on them um hindsight always 2020 next time i will to be honest with you guys i didn't know it was going to come out so nice and uh, there's the floor shine logo uh, I had these soles stamped before I put them on uh, by Steve from Beto's Leatherworks. Uh, hindsight, next time I will get the JR leather, JR heels, and then I won't need this because this house leather, you know, kind of wears down pretty quick. Long story short. Um, I wore these around the block just once and I noticed the leather starting to wear down. But they're holding up really, really well. I've probably worn these, I don't know, probably about 15 times. Awesome, awesome. Love these shoes. Steve, I also purchased these insoles from him. Isn't that beautiful? New logo on there. The old insoles were just so dirty. Uh, but these don't need any of that. Look how nice they are, right? But here's a couple differences that I noticed. Um, obviously, the most obvious one is the Canadian stamp. But look at the edging. I've only seen this, I've only seen this on the Canadian-made floor shimes. They have this, uh, I don't know exactly what you call it, but they have an edging that's sewn on around the edge of the insole. And all the Canadian models seem to have that. So that's one difference I see. Uh, another difference I see is, by the way, this would be called a long wing blucher. A blucher is a style of derby. Derby has the open lacing system. This flaps at the front. So derby, most general. What this makes, what makes this a blucher, first of all, wing tip, long wing, because the wing goes all the way back. This is also a long wing, but here's the minor difference. A blucher is where you see the eye stays are a separate piece of leather sewn on top of the shoe. And I believe, I believe, I could be wrong on this, these are not a blucher because you see the entire quarter, it's not a separate piece of leather, the entire quarter, right, makes this flap. Minor difference, no one's really going to care about a shoe aficionado. So I believe these are just a derby and not a long wing blucher. So I think this would be a long wing derby. Um, but the stitch density is pretty good. I'm guessing, I'm just guessing, that logo, I believe they stopped using in uh, 91 or 92. So I think these are 92 or earlier. Um, I'm guessing they're probably 80s, late 80s, early 90s. It's hard to see, but you can still see the original Floorshine logo there. They don't have very much wear on the soles. It's a little more obvious on this one, right? Floorshine Imperial fairly lightly worn. Stitch density is pretty good. 
Um, the stitch quality though, I mean, it's not superb, I guess I would say. Um, I'm gonna show you here a little bit, and I'm, I'm nitpicking here a little bit, but in other words, what you generally see is, it, it, to quote uh, uh, David from vcle.com, the Bible of all things uh, uh, vintage floor shine, he says the 50s shoes were better than the 1960s shoes, the 60s were better than the 70s, the 70s were better than the 80s, by the 90s they mostly went overseas. And you can see here, the way that I'm gonna try and show you. Stitching gets kinda close you see on the top side it gets really close as a matter of fact if you can make that out to the edge of the welting there um, that's not preferable to be that close I would say um, and it's not quite as close but still pretty close on that shoe so from what I see here um, you know the stitch quality is good you know not like phenomenal or unbelievable or anything like that uh, the leather feel, though, the one thing that did surprise me, the leather on this does feel really nice. So if these are at least a 30-year-old shoe, 35-year-old shoe, the leather feels very supple. It just, I would have never have guessed, you know, just going by the leather feel alone, that they were that old. A um, couple things that did surprise me, how close, that, you know, they are reinforced on the back, but how close that eyelet is to the edge. But I guess it's, I mean, it's a little further away than that. But they're pretty close to the edge there. So, um, like I said, I'm gonna send these off to Alberto. And at the time I'm filming this intro right here, I haven't 100% decided. I have a few ideas rolling around in my head. Uh, maybe something a little more of a museum effect. That's when you get a modeled kind of, you know, patchwork of colors. I'm also thinking maybe a copper patina. Um, I'm also thinking like a reverse patina kind of where usually you'd have this recessed area darker the toe darker, he does a kind of flip-flop where you make some areas lighter, so. Um, but we're gonna uh, get these started and we'll cut back here to after the work is done in Arizona and I'll be right back. Hey everybody, I'm super excited. Package is back and I know exactly what this is because it's from uh, Alberto. Uh, now let's open it up and I'm gonna show you what we got. Now, my wonderful wife here is the videographer and I'm assuming she's gonna at least pretend that she cares about shoes for just a few moments. And I want you to give me your honest, give me your honest opinion to them. You're kind of a, a you know, a good unbiased, I guess. You know, like a non-shoe person to you, okay? Now granted, they're not gonna have laces in them and I'm still going to, I'm going to finish the sole edges. So just look at the uppers, does that make sense? Okay? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, I'm so I've only seen a grainy picture of this. What do you think? Look at that, huh? Those are much nicer than the picture. That is a navy blue shoe, and it turns to like a green and a and a copper color. That's that's awesome. That's exactly what I was hoping for. That's nice. See, it's even got a little bit of a ghosting around there. I love that. I mean, there's no there's no one that's got a shoe that looks like this. You know what I mean? You know, let you zoom in on that for a second while I get the other one. I've gone on precisely. Ooh, this one's even, this one's different. I mean, it's similar, but it's a little bit. <clears throat> Look at that. Look at that color on this toe. See, there's a little bit of variation. I mean, you can you can definitely tell this is not machined on end. Look how shiny that is already. I figured I was gonna have to spit shine, but then the blue transitions into green, and I see the that that brown, that walnut tan there is definitely lighter than it was before. I think the shoes were overall darker brown than that. Isn't that awesome? They're nice. All right, I'm not done with them yet. I'm going to do the sole edges, but Alberto, you are a true magician. And they match our dog. And this, what I'm wearing here, if you see, this is exactly what I wanted him to go with, right? In other words, you know, like blue undistressed jeans, you know, I have a lot in the blue realm. So the one thing that just, uh, I mean, these were like my opus, you know, these shoes. In other words, like my best you know, job yet. If you didn't see the video on this, I'll link it. They've even got the new, new brand new logo in them. Um, I hand stitch. It's about like 230 hand done stitches. I resold them myself. I created the new V cleat ish heels on them, but it's like black and blue, you know, which this is a casual shoe. You know, I don't have any black casual jeans or all this Navy color. So that's why I just thought this kind of like filled a gap in the wardrobe and I'm, I'm really happy about that. So I could even wear something that has some green or tan in it and it'll kind of pick that up too. 
So, what I want to work on next is the sole edges. Uh, definitely not resoling these things, they're too nice. These original soles, too, are very, very tough compared to the modern leather that you get. And uh, to get this quality leather is pretty expensive, so very lightly worn. You can still see the remnants of that original Florsheim Imperial logo there. Um, not 100% sure what I'm going to do with the heels yet. I may replace them. Um, I may leave them. They're pretty nice. It's hard to justify replacing that heel. It's pretty nice. I might just leave the heels and replace them down the road. But you see the edge finishing. What happens over time, I've noticed, is with shoes, I think some of the leather either squishes out or grows or shrinks over time at different rates. And, eh, you know, it's not bad, but it's just it's not pretty. I'll cut in here a picture of a really nicely finished sole edge that I'm, uh, you know, kind of what I'm going for. When I did these Florsheim Imperials, I had a brand new welt, brand new midsole, brand new outsole. So really all I did was just take and, uh, you know, put some tan or what color, the light brown uh, sapphire cream polish, and that brought the color to it. Um, I, number one, want to go a little bit darker. I don't think I want that much of a contrast. I want something more of a medium brown. So I'm going to use this, the sapphire. Uh, this is number 37, medium brown. Um, I think that's going to match better. Number two, this is old leather, and I don't, it's just not that clean. It's, you know, 30 something year old leather, so I'm going to use a medium brown. Let's see what happens. Uh, here we go. had a couple minutes, I don't know, three, four, five minutes to dry. Let's see if it's ready yet. Yes, it is. Look at that. Oh. It's not perfect. Dang, it's not bad. For mirror shining toe caps, I prefer pure polish, but I still got a bunch of this left, so I'm gonna try to use up my Saphir mirror gloss. See, it's drying up and getting crusty, so perfect for this. I'm gonna take a little chunk and lose it. There it is.
toe caps are really pretty shiny. I don't know that they really need much, but I'm gonna add a little bit of pure polish, high shine paste slash wax. finished up. Tried to get them in a little bit of sunlight here. The kind of, uh, man, the color is so complex. It's amazing. Heel edges. And sole edges. And I did actually put a little bit of a polish on the bottom of the soles. Now, the wear area, obviously you take 16 steps outside, that's gonna you know, go back to leather, but I would not do this if I were putting the shoes on eBay. I would consider this a deceptive practice to resell shoes, but obviously I'm not reselling these. You know what I mean? In other words, putting color to make a old leather look new, I would not do that for flipping shoes. But These shoes do need to be uh, viewed in the light to really appreciate them. In low lighting, they actually just you know look kind of black with hints of brown, but the color, and, and by the way, the laces. I do like the flat laces, I'm kind of into those right now. I'm gonna get some navy laces. Um, but as you can see, it, it looks navy blue here, but then you see, I didn't even see this because yesterday the light wasn't very good. It was overcast and, and, and a little darker. It was getting to be evening. Um, but you see the, the tan and green tones coming through here across the broguing. You see more color in the vamp, the brown. And I really do like how the sole edges came out. I think that just, I think it goes well. All right. See some marbling through there. And again, down the broguing. But these really do need to be in the light to be appreciated. Can you see that? I don't have a great angle here. I need them to be in the sun, but then the shadow of my camera gets in the way. I didn't notice that yesterday. So the navy turns to green, turns to a, you know, kind of a, a tan walnut color, a brown color, a light brown, I guess I would call that. And I also didn't notice the back here. The navy turns to green a little bit. And I do like, I'm happy with how the heels came out. That's pretty good. I love that, where you can see that leather. They're beautiful. I'm definitely going to find occasions to wear these out in bright direct sunlight, though. I think that's where they're really going to come to light. The magic is really going to show.
you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, go to my YouTube page, Robert Powers, and then click on playlists. And from there, you can go to things such as before and after videos, where you'll find a whole list of videos similar to this one. I'm sending these. I'm sending these.